Why the Gulf? Oh, it's a great place to be. The sunsets are mad. The sunrises are even more beautiful. But uh, the main thing is that there's prawns there. I'm not sure that I can put words on it exactly, but I think there's a piece about the ocean. Once you go below the surface, you enter a different universe almost. Everything looks different, the way that the structure of life is different. So I guess it's the closest you can get to outer space without being there. I love fashion, I always have, and it was awesome to study it, and I love the construction side and the sewing side, but when I got into the industry, I realised that I just couldn't compete with the Instagram, Facebook, mumbo jumbo stuff. It's just not me, so I gave it the flick. <laughs> I fell in love pretty much as soon as we went out into the world. I just couldn't believe that we get to see all these like amazing things. And then we started working, and I loved the work even more. So yeah, just a typical farm boy. Yeah, spent most of my years on the farm, mostly cropping, but we also had cattle, uh, quite a few sheep. I've never really been on a boat until I come trawling. I've been here four and a half years now. It's just a good change. Throw a little bit of hard work in there, it won't be hard to get a country boy to do it. Setup is probably the best time of the season because everybody does turn up here within a day of one another. And it's just a little rat race. Ah, it's always exciting when you start another season, you know, you sort of spend all this time on the dock being in Cairns and we always get over Cairns, so by the end of it we're ready to just hit, go out there. The first couple of weeks it's just, it's hectic. It's hectic but it's unreal. Sometimes have that little moment when you're out there and the dolphins are there and yeah, it just feels right. Waking up in the morning and the sun rises is the first thing that gets you. There's nothing to be sad about out there, so no one gets really too worried about anything. I don't think there's a need to where it's sea and it's peaceful. People would pay a lot of money to just go and see the places where you see. You couldn't pay to go there. You literally couldn't get there, I don't think, so. <laughs> Initially in 2003, CSIRO started up a program to identify the best methods to, I guess, monitor bycatch. And we come up with a crew member observer program. Every shot they're looking for any other threatened or protected species, which is sawfish, turtles, seahorse, pipefish, um, and sea snakes. We let them know how many we're seeing in the shot and what type of species were present. You know, I feel like I'm studying sort of while I'm at sea and doing a little bit more than just my everyday job. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I love it because it feels like at least I'm giving a little bit back. Keeping track of those numbers is probably a pretty important thing from an environmental standpoint because you know, you know how much is out there, you know what sort of impact we're having on them. Well, I think it, the younger generation realise that the, um, you know, there is an ecological um, issue with, with trawl fishing. It does catch bycatch. The people we get as crew member observers tend to be the, the younger generation coming through, the, the cooks, the deckhands, and uh, they're excited to be a part of that push to, to reduce the impact of trawling on bycatch. We're in their territory. It's not our home. You're causing them the trouble, you know? It's interesting to, to work with intelligent creatures that way, and some of them are just really, really cute. So every time we have an octopus, we're always like, oh, stop the belt, let's get it back in the water as quick as we can, because they're just so cool. There are animal groups that, that are more at risk than others. Down the track, it'll be more targeted to those animals. And that's happening now. Sawfish, we're doing a number of projects to, to uh, increase their uh, sustainability. I think Australia is quite unique. They have one of the only places in the world where there's actually recorded habitat of all four types of sawfish. And I suppose, in all honesty, we're probably some of the only people that actually have contact with them. 
And that's something that the skippers and crew are really keen to sort out. They, are, they recognise the issues and they're willing to try and address it rather than just try and ignore it or hope it'll go away. There's a project running now to get video footage to see what the behaviour of these large animals is when they uh, encounter a TED and look at mitigation measures such as trawling behaviour, net design, to actually start increasing the escapement rates. Ultimately it will uh, result in their populations being more sustainable. I've got to say, it's probably one of the highlights of my childhood. You know, I just remember dragging a net down the Swan River catching wild king prawns. So we'd fight over who would be in the deep water. As a chef, you know, provenance is really important when it comes to your ingredients and the quality of the ingredients. You know, the northern prawn fishery covers that sort of expanse of northern Australia and you get a sense of just the extreme wilderness and, uh, and how raw and untouched the area is. Knowing that some of the best prawns come from that area as a chef just drives me crazy. When it comes to cooking seafood, I think the more simple the process, the better. Buy the best ingredients you can afford and don't try and mess with them too much. I mean, who doesn't love a garlic prawn? The Northern Prawn Fishery was the first MSC certified tropical prawn fishery. Having the MSC certification tells consumers that that fishery is doing, you know, the things that it should be doing to address the challenges around prawn trawling. We see things like controls on effort closures over sensitive sea bottom. Innovations around gear, grids to remove turtles and sharks, for instance gear modifications to reduce the number of small fish in the catch as well. These are all things that collectively place the northern prawn fishery um, amongst the, the top prawn fisheries in the world. Ever since I worked in the industry I've learned that there's so much effort going into the seafood that people purchase, every little prawn that they eat. I feel like I fell, fell straight into it, I don't know, I loved it. I'd like to be out there a lot of the time more than I'd like to be on land. Oh my god. The proudest he's ever been of me. When I came back from my first season of trawling, he had like this twinkle in his eye. He was like, my daughter, a prawn fisherman. She went to sea. It's let me live life a lot better anyway. A lot freer. So I can actually just do what I want. If I want to go back to farming, I can. If I want to go travelling, I can. If I want to get away from reality, I can. Go, to, go on a boat for four months. It's just in the last few years that everyone's sort of come together and trying to work as a team and as an industry to actually promote sustainability and, and it's really taken a step into the future. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever made so many friends in such a short time and it's just a really cool industry. I've never loved a job as much as this. I'm, I'm not getting out anytime soon. <laughs>